Okay, we're back here with um, Rotational Kinematics Part 2. And um, so let me uh, just start out with just a real simple problem. So let's say this thing is going to start to rotate. And um, its its initial omega angular speed is 0 radians per second. So it's starting from rest. So that's radians per second. And, but it has an alpha, an angular acceleration of 2 radians per second squared. So um, what that means is uh, that every second it is going to either gain or lose 2 radians per second. So every second it will gain or lose 2 radians per second of omega. What will be its final angular velocity after one rotation? Okay. Well, if it's a constant alpha, then I can use these equations. And um, the equation that I might want to use is this one. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha 2, uh, I'm sorry, squared, squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So um, omega initial is 0, so I can get rid of that term. So omega final squared equals 2 times alpha, which is um, 2 radians per second squared, times um, delta theta. Now, delta theta, it says one rotation, but I have to be in terms of, I have to be in terms of radians. So one rotation is 2 pi radians. Okay, let me write that out here. One, one rotation, one revolution is 2 pi radians. Okay, let's see what happens then. Well, um, I have 2 times 2 times 2 is at 8 pi. Now, what happens to the units? That's going to be 8 pi, and the units are going to be radians, this is in radians, so it's going to be radians squared over seconds squared. So omega final is the square root of 8 pi radians squared over seconds squared. See how that works? Okay, well, you know, not all rotational motion has constant acceleration. And so um, how do you handle it if it's if the acceleration is changing? Well, you need to know um, just how the, it's changing with time. And so um, let's say we're given that theta is um, 2 radians over seconds to the fourth times t to the fourth. See how if I put in a time there, I just get radians? Because this will be seconds to the fourth, and that would cancel that seconds to the fourth. Okay, let me find um, the oh, the angular speed after one second. Okay, how fast will it be going after one second? Well, the angular speed is just the derivative of theta with respect to time. The derivative of theta is um, 8 radians per second to the fourth times t cubed. So if I put in one second there, it looks like I'll put it here, omega at one second. It looks like it's eight radians per second. Every second at that point, every second it's going eight radians. Though it's not going to be doing that um, except for that one point in time. Okay, how about its acceleration? What's its acceleration at one second? It's angular acceleration. Well, its angular acceleration at one second is just the derivative of omega with respect to time. Um, or you could say it's the second derivative of theta with respect to time. That's the notation that you might use. So um, if you take this, the next derivative of this, you get 24 radians per second to the fourth times um, t squared. So if I put in one second there, I get 24 radians per second squared. That's what alpha is at one second. 
the angular acceleration at one second. Okay, so the calculus is very similar to the calculus of the last of uh, the kinematics unit that we did at the beginning of the year. Okay, I also want to tell you about bridge equations. Bridge equations, um, what they do is they link rotational motion to linear motion. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to want to be able to bounce back and forth between linear and rotational motion. Let me explain why. If this thing is rotating, let's say this is a, a merry-go-round, and let's say you're here on the merry-go-round. Well, you have a certain speed, linear speed, that's related to omega. You have a certain acceleration that is related to alpha. And so um, I want to tell you about those. The, the bridge equations relate the angular speeds to the linear speeds for any object that's on a rotating platform. So here are the bridge equations. The bridge equations um, are these. Uh, you've already had this, I think, in math. This is arc length is equal to r theta. You might have had it as theta is equal to s over r. But that um, is um, one of the bridge equations. So if you, if you, um, let's have you go, um, let's have theta be two pi rotations. If theta is two pi rotations, do you see that when you do two pi times r, you get the arc length of the circumference of a circle? Hey, what if theta is just one radian? If you put in one radian here, and multiply by r, sure enough, you've gone one radius. Um, as far as um, if you're moving on a, on a circle, if you um, have an angular velocity of omega, then um, depending on where you are in the circle, you're going to have a, a, a certain tangential speed. If you're right at the center of the circle, so r equals zero for where you're at, then you are going to have no tangential speed. So if you're right here, you'll have no tangential speed. But as you walk out, like here you'll be going faster, and here you'll be going faster still. Here you'll be going the fastest that you can go on, the, on that platform that's rotating. Okay, so that's just saying that your tangential speed then, that would be this speed, that's tangential speed, that is um, related to omega it, with that equation. Your tangential acceleration um, is also related to alpha in the same way. Do you see the pattern going here? Arc length equals r theta. V tangent equals r omega. A tangent equals r alpha. So those, you're just multiplying the, the, the how far you are, are from the center of the circle by your by your alpha or your omega or your theta okay um, one more thing about that though if you are on a circle that's accelerating um, let's say this circle I'm having a hard time drawing circles lately uh, let's say you're out here and it's it, it has an alpha you have an alpha well, that means that your your tangential velocity is is not constant. Your tangential velocity, you're getting faster and faster and faster. Your tangential velocity, and and um, so you know your your tangential acceleration is um, just going to be r times alpha. But you also have um, a centripetal acceleration, and centripetal acceleration is um, v squared over r. But this is v tangent squared over r. And so uh, the centripetal acceleration, if you look at this equation, I'm going to substitute this in for r omega. So that's going to be um, r squared omega squared over r. So the centripetal acceleration is going to be r omega squared. So if you have an alpha and you're out here, you actually have um, both a tangential component of your acceleration and a centripetal component that's related to omega and alpha.